Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Wednesday to you during week six of distance learning. I am so excited that Mrs. Lilly has asked me to uh, share a lesson with your class. You're focused this week on lesson 5.7, which is writing zeros in the dividend. So what I'd like to do is work a few of these problems, examples with you um, from the practice page that Mrs. Lily assigned to you. And what I want to do is point out some important tips and point out some um, important things for you to keep in mind as you're solving division problems that will require you to add a zero in the dividend. So the first thing I want to tell you is there will be two types of problems on this practice sheet. One problem, one type of problem will have a decimal in the dividend. So let's look at number three. Number three has a decimal in the dividend and a decimal in the divisor. And number four has a decimal in the divisor. So some of the problems will require you to do calculations with decimals. Problem number two is the second type of problem that you will see. There are no decimals in the dividend or in the divisor. So the divisor is 25, the dividend is 405. But what we want to point out is when you are completing the, the division steps, there may be a need to add a zero, and that is when you will include the decimal in the dividend. Okay, So there are two types of problems, some with some with decimals already in the dividend or the divisor, as we see in number three or number four. And number two, the second type of problem, there is no decimal, but you will add one in the dividend in order to complete the, the division calculation. So they provided an example for us for number one. As you can see, there is a decimal in the dividend. What I want to keep, what, what, what I want to make sure you understand is when you add a zero, when there's a decimal and you add a zero in the dividend, it does not change the value of that number. So think of this like money. So this would be $23.70. And you can have seven dimes or you can have 70 pennies. So this is 23 and 70 hundreds or 23 and seven tenths. Same number, same amount. We do not change the value of the dividend when we add a zero after the decimal, okay? Just keep that in mind. So let's work our first problem, number two. And this one, again, is a type that does not have a decimal already, but we will add a decimal as we are completing the division calculation. So the first step, is to figure out how many times 25 can go into 40. So of course, 25 cannot go into four, so we move over to the next digit and we have 40. And that is one time. And then one times 25 is 25. And then of course we subtract and we get 15. We bring down the five from the dividend and we have 155. How many times does 25 go into 155? I'm going to pause and let you complete that calculation. Okay, if you came up with six, that is correct. Five times six is 30, six times two is 12, plus three is 15. And again, we subtract and we get five. Well, we are unable to divide five by 25. It's not large enough. So we need to add a zero in the dividend. Well, how do we do that? Well, I'm going to change the color so that it stands out a little bit. What we're going to do is add a decimal. And whenever we add a decimal in the dividend, we want to add a decimal in the quotient, okay? So if we add a, add a, de a decimal, and a zero after the decimal. Remember, we have not changed the value of the dividend. This is still 405. But because we've added the decimal in the dividend and the quotient, we can add a zero and then bring it down so that we can complete our division calculation. So now we have 50 divided by 25, and that, of course, is 2. 2 times 25 is 50. and we have completed this problem. I'm going to stop the video now, and what I'd like for you to do is work number, let's scroll down here. I'm 
I believe it's number eight. So practice solving number eight, and I'll check back in with you in a moment.